Sailor Jerry's today is one of the most recognizable liquors behind bars. With the signature wild tattoo art, this 92 proof rum has become extremely popular and is a more flavorful spice rum than its closest competitors. But do you ever wonder, who exactly was Sailor Jerry? Why do we drink his rum? How did the United States history create what we drink now? Today, we'll learn more about what happens behind bars. Norman Collins was a nomad, a poet, a radio host, a Navy sailor, a self-trained electrician, and a musician. But first and foremost, he was an outspoken tattoo artist. Nicknamed Sailor Jerry, he was a rare breed of artist at the time, being the first to combine the Japanese traditional style with American tattooing. It was his own style, and his most famous tattoos are what you see on the rum bottles today. His art combined the bold outlines and colors of American art with Asian sensibilities, creating a unique style that still influences tattooists today. According to Jerry, he was the first to use purple, white, yellow, and blue, and he was happy that others started using what he called good colors in tattooing. Born in 1911 in Reno, he started amateur tattooing as young as 14 years old while he was train hopping across America, once he left home until he came across Tats Thomas in Chicago, at the time a local tattoo legend. This was the first time Sailor Jerry would use a tattoo machine, literally paying homeless people with booze to let him tattoo them. Then at 19 years old, he enlisted in the Navy to continue his explorations and through his military service, found a love for Hawaii and moved there to start working as a tattoo artist, and in 1942 set up shop in the Hotel Street district of Honolulu. At the time, Hotel Street was notorious for being a place for sailors in the Navy to go a little crazy. In the center of Chinatown, it was a 10-block area where military servicemen would spend their checks on alcohol, souvenirs, arcades, tattoos, and most notably, prostitution. Fifteen brothels actually legally operated, giving their famous three-minute services to men for three dollars, with those seeing the women known as three-minute men. Why three minutes? Because there were so many men that were willing to buy and not enough girls, so they limited the time that could be bought. These women generally saw 100 or more men in the four legally open hours in the mornings in Honolulu. It was a rambunctious, sketchy place. So, it was the perfect place to set up shop, especially because at the time, tattooing was very much counterculture, not mainstream like it is today. And it was the perfect place to sell his own style of tattoos, with the Asian population and influence in Hawaii, and the 400,000 sailors that were in Honolulu due to World War II. As his so sign read, the original Sailor Jerry, known the world over for solid, bright, neat tattooing. My work speaks for itself. He was known for his outspokenness, with another sign on his shop window reading, if you don't think you have balls enough to wear a tattoo, don't get one, but don't try to make excuses for yourself by knocking the fellow who does. Sailor Jerry also had a policy that he would not give large tattoos to customers who had tattoos by other artists that he did not respect. Which makes sense, given his motto of, I haven't done my best yet, only my best so far. Even while tattooing in his prime, he still maintained a schooner tour of Hawaii and hosted a political and poetry radio show called Old Ironsides on KRTG. Jerry was also a self-taught electrician, which allowed him to create new tattoo machines. He also loved riding his Harley, which unfortunately is where he would see his demise collapsing in a cold sweat on his bike after a heart attack. He was a tough sailor though and got back on the bike and rode home before passing away the next day in 1973. Before he died though, Sailor Jerry wrote a letter that asked upon his death that his shot be passed on to his protégés, Ed Hardy or Mike Malone. If neither of them could take over the shop, then he asked that the shop be burned to the ground. 
Malone ended up taking possession and running the shop for nearly 25 years. Finally, in 1999, Ed Hardy and Mike Malone partnered with Steve Grassi and Quaker City Mercantile to establish the company known as Sailor Jerry LTD. This company owns all of the rights to Sailor Jerry's designs and merchandise and uses the designs on items such as clothing, shoes, and playing cards, and of course, Sailor Jerry rum. Now one of the most popular spiced rums on the market, and one of the fairest priced rums coming in at under $20 per fifth. Sailor Jerry is possibly the best mainstream rum for a Cuba Libre, otherwise known as a rum and coke. It is an overproofed spice rum coming in at 92 proof or 46% alcohol. The flavor is heavy spice with flavors of clove, cinnamon, vanilla, and oak. According to Sailor Jerry's site, their recipe is based on the tradition of sailors improving the flavor of their onboard rum rations instead of the slow process of aging in barrels most sailors opted just to blend in spices with the spirit and that's what they do today sailor jerry is a blend of the best caribbean rums blended together and then their signature spices added hopefully you enjoyed learning about what happened to cause the creation of sailor jerry rum hopefully you appreciate the history lesson and now you can tell all of your friends about sailor jerry rum every time they order it at the bar Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you like it. And comment with the brand that you think should go behind Mars Nets. Oh, and subscribe so that you see more of this content. Thanks for watching. Cocktail Crazy.